Are you friendly with your good bacteria? Now that's the topic for today. We have good and bad bacteria, both have a role to play, but what is it that we can do to make sure that we have a good gut microbiome? And what is it that this gut microbiome does for us to make sure that we are in a good health? That's the topic for today. Let's move on. We know that we have good bacteria and bad bacteria, both have a significant role to play in our system. But what is it that these gut bacteria are so closely related and linked to our vitamins. Yes, the fact is that you cannot prepare vitamins into your body if you do not have a healthy gut microbiome or you do not have a good balance of your gut bacteria. Yes, gut bacteria will enable you to have or make vitamins in your body. There are only two vitamins that your body can make without the presence of bacteria. That is vitamin D, which is absorbed by the sun rays through your skin and it protects you from a variety of diseases. And there is another one, which is B3. Now B3 is essentially converted form of tryptophan, which is a protein. And this vitamin B3 is extremely critical because it decreases your bad cholesterol and it increases is your good cholesterol for you. So these are the only two vitamins that do not require bacteria. Rest any other vitamins that you want to have in your body or to want to have the nutrition from in your body. These vitamins are prepared by your bacteria. So can you escape bacteria? Absolutely no. Now let's uh, understand what is it that your gut bacteria really requires from you. It requires you to have fermented vegetables. Which fermented vegetables? Any fermented vegetables. It can even be a garlic fermented. It can be your regular achars, your pickles in an Indian kitchen or it could be your sauerkraut or your kimchi, whatever you are comfortable with. What is another thing that gut bacteria require from you? Well, they require fiber. Which is this fiber? It is not the fiber that you get from your refined carbs. It is the fiber that is required from your leafy greens. It's the fiber that is required from your fermented vegetables. So go back to your traditional ways of cooking and the fiber rich vegetables. Bring in rainbow colors into every meal because that's going to be a feast to your microbiome. And that feast to your microbiome is going to ensure that you have a healthy state of being. Now let's figure out what is it that these gut bacteria really do to you. Let's go one by one. Now these gut bacteria are extremely important because they make vitamin K2. What does vitamin K2 do? Now K2 is extremely important for removing calcification from where that calcium should not be to where it really should be. So there are conditions that people go through like soft tissue calcification. Some people have lumps in their breast. Some people have certain bone spurs or people may have uh, you know other deposits in their arteries so a lot of people who have found blockages in their heart arteries and after the surgical procedure they remove these white colored deposits that come out of your arteries they are generally your calcification deposits and these calcification deposits uh, stay there and are not absorbed into your body because vitamin k2 is not present to remove it from the wrong places and put it into the right places and ensure absorption so vitamin k2 is important not only for your um, soft tissue calcification but it also prevents you from kidney stones it reduces kidney stones it takes care of calcification of your arteries it reduces it prevents it it also uh, enables you not to have or get prevented from breast tissue calcification so yes so this is very important k2 has a significant role to play and k2 is formed by your gut bacteria you cannot afford not to have k2 which means you cannot now afford to have no gut bacteria into your system or bad bacteria into your system. Another thing that your bacteria really do to your body is that they make B9 which is folate. Now what does B9 or folate do to you? Every pregnant lady is advised to take these folic acid tablets or these folic acid capsules. Why is she asked to take these folic acid capsules? Now this folic acid is extremely important or this folate is extremely important for us to prevent any birth defects. We require B9 or folate to make sure that we do not go through any depression 
डिप्रेशन एंगजाइटी और मेंटल डिजॉर्डर्स और माइंड रिलेटेड डिजॉर्डर्स वी ऑल्सो नीड फोलेट टू मेक श्योर दैट योर न्यूरो ट्रांसमीटर्स और योर सिग्नलिंग सिस्टम इन टू योर बॉडी इज वर्किंग जस्ट फाइन एंड देर इज गुड अमाउंट ऑफ सिग्नलिंग दैट इज गोइंग फ्रॉम योर हारमोन्स टू योर ऑर्गन्स एंड वाइसी वर्सा एंड फ्रॉम योर ब्रेन टू योर ऑर्गन्स एक्सेट्रा यू नीड अ गुड सिग्नलिंग सिस्टम यू वॉन्ट योर न्यूरो ट्रांसमीटर्स टू बी वर्किंग वेल इट विल ऑल्सो इंश्योर रिड्यूस्ड स्ट्रेस and all of this by the presence of vitamin b9 which is folate and this cannot be formed into your body if you do not have good friendly gut bacteria another thing why bacteria is required is for biotin so we know that we need good quality biotin for good quality hair for good quality nails for overall growth and development for cell growth into your body you definitely want your neurotransmitters to be made well you don't don't want to lose hair and for all of this you require a good quantum of biotin now let's understand that out of so many types of bacteria and microbes that are present into your gut there is only one type that can make biotin so the deficiency of biotin is very very common and so uh, yes gut bacteria help you in preparing biotin so that significance is definitely there another thing that gut bacteria does is to create b12 we have such a huge population in the country today that is deficient in vitamin b12 so what makes vitamin b12 your bacteria your gut bacteria make vitamin b12 for you if you want a condition where you want a proper adequate product action of your red blood cells you need b12 if you want to prevent yourself from a condition of anemia you need b12 if you want uh, to have a good nerve brain energy state then you need b12 b12 also has a significant role to play because it plays uh, you know very closely works with your hcl which is your hydrochloric acid which is your stomach acid so b12 works with your hydrochloric acid very very closely so you need vitamin b12 but who makes it for you it is bacteria if i have to put it in very simple terms b12 is your bacteria poop every living organism consumes it poops and it also gives out gases so similarly bacteria are also living organisms they also consume they also poop and they also give out gases now this bacteria poop is essentially your vitamin b12 how much of a gross it may sound to you but that is the reality now what else does gut bacteria do for you gut bacteria also creates b1 now b1 is uh, very very required and it is prepared by these microbes what does b1 do to you b1 actually creates gaba now uh, this gaba is essentially an anti stress vitamin and it keeps you calm it keeps you balanced it keeps you relaxed so gaba is very very critical gaba is made by b1 and b1 is made by your bacteria now what bacteria also do in your body is that they kill the pathogens they kill the microbes they kill the unwanted unessential pathogens into your body so your gut bacteria have a tremendous role to play but unfortunately by the way of our wrong diet we kill our uh, microbes we kill our gut bacteria by the way of antibiotics we kill our bacteria to a large extent now let's understand that our gut bacteria have to be into an adult body to the weight of 1.4 kg now this weight is constant okay this cannot go up or down you need to maintain your bacteria to 1.4 kg which coincidentally is also the weight of your brain now just look at how amazing our body really functions so you need this constant weight to be maintained at all times and what antibiotics do is that they kill the good bacteria and they kill the bad bacteria and the quantum of bacteria into your body reduces which means this weight of 1.4 kg reduces now when this reduces your body is not going to keep you in a into a condition where that weight gets reduced that weight has to be constant so your body starts preparing resistant bacteria to fulfill 
the requirement of this 1.4 kg we have a role you know that is played very significantly by good bacteria even your bad bacteria also have a role to play into your body but your resistant bacteria do not have any role to play in your body they are not required but your body has to prepare it because you've killed your uh, good and bad bacteria by the way of antibiotics that's one reason why body will create resistant bacteria and it takes a long time and we have to go through a series of generations of these resistant bacteria to be able to bring back our friendly bacteria and uh, come out of the state of dysbiosis so yes it is very very critical we do not want to kill these microbes kill these bacteria by unwanted unrequired antibiotics that we generally just pop in so try to stay away from antibiotics it makes a tremendous difference to your gut diversity to your gut microbiome to your gut health i hope this was very very useful i hope we also have understood the the significance of uh, gut microbiome as far as vitamin production is concerned we cannot have vitamins if we do not have gut microbiome namaste see you again in another video till then see you